Hey church, thanks for checking in to this week's Afterthought. Uh, We've been in the middle of our series, Sorry Not Sorry. We've been talking about the things that we believe, the core beliefs that we have as, as the church that we're unapologetic about. These are the things that are so central to our faith. And on Sunday we talked about the Word of God, and in particular the written Word of God, which is a sure prophecy. It is authoritative from God. It is God-breathed, as we kind of broke down in this sermon on Sunday. I want to reread this quote from John Piper that I think is powerful. It is impossible to exaggerate the worth of the Word of God. It is infinite. When you think about that, that God's Word was inspired by the Holy Spirit, was breathed into by God. Over 40 different authors uh, were the ones that physically sat down and wrote, but they were moved by the Spirit to write only what the Spirit allowed them to write. That it carries this weight, this authority of the Word of God, and, and it has the power to change our lives, has the power to shape us, has the power to direct us, has the power to convict us, to redeem us. It's a beautiful thing, and I I want to read out of Acts chapter 17 because this is how we should interact as people of God with the Word of God. And here's what it says. The brothers immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. And when they arrived, they went into the Jewish synagogue. Now these Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the Word with all eagerness, examining the Scriptures daily to see if these things were so. This is my heart for us as the church, that like the people of Berea, that we will receive God's word with eagerness, that we would dig into God's word, that we have this this just incredible appetite for God's word, that we would dig into it, and that we would search the scriptures for what is true, that we wouldn't just take what uh, maybe I say from a pulpit or any other preacher says from a pulpit is truth, but that we would go back to the word and we would dig in and make sure that what we are saying is is truth, and that we would allow that truth to shape us, lead us, and direct us in all things that are godly. And so God's Word comes to us, like the Scripture says, sharper than a two-edged sword. It, it has the ability to divide between the soul and the spirit. It's living. It's active. Let the Word of God just come alive in your heart. Let it dwell richly within you in all wisdom. And let's develop an appetite for God's Word that we search it with all eagerness and allow it to transform our hearts. God bless you.